fell first, Holmes was born. Then he got fat, bald, and tired, tired, tired. Stop, Holmes. Beware, your host, Jonathan Holmes. <laughs> I love that's how we start the show now. That was Sinistar. Thank you for introducing me, Sinistar. I'm Jonathan Holmes. I'm the host of the show. It's called Sup Holmes. It's a show about video game people. And we've got one on right now, or at least most of one. How are you, Shahan? Good, how are you? Not bad. You made sound shapes. Is that right? Uh, me and John, who is currently... Uh in the washroom, but he'll be here in a second. He'll be sitting right in this in this area. That'll be his area for the day? Yeah, this will be where you'll, this, this will be where you'll see his bodice. I can't wait. It'll be all clean from the washing he's doing. Can't wait to see how washed he's going to be. So uh, we, we started already. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> it's a, tell him it's totally, totally casual. This is fun. It's like we're really just hanging out like friends, even though we just met a few minutes ago. Uh, what did you do on Sound Shapes? What was your role in the development of the game? Uh, so, I guess Sound Shapes is a collaboration between John and I. Um, so we basically co-designed the game together, um, and my my focus was more on the music and music creation side, and John's was more on the game and visual side, I guess. But we both, I guess, we also crossed over into each other's turf. Yeah, that would make sense, because the game is very much, at least from my interpretation of it, about crossing over visuals and, and audio really as much as possible. The the audio sounds like the visuals look, if that makes sense, especially in some of the uh, the more literal levels, like the, the Beck levels, where uh, you actually jump on a, a cloud that says the, the word ah, while Beck goes ah. <laughs> how how was that for you to make a game that Beck went awe in later? That must have been pretty weird. Um, I I mean I think it was, you know, really cool to do that. But at the time, you know, we had a deadline and we were just stressing out about how the hell do we what do we do here? <laughs> <laughs> and that's John Mack for those of you yeah. who are just listening to this. This is also audio podcast, so. People are now hearing a new voice. That's you, John Mac. How are you? Do you yeah, prefer John or John Mac? Uh, whatever you want, I guess. <laughs> I'll go with John then. Thanks, John. Uh, so you were stressing out over deadlines. Tell us a little yeah. bit about the uh, the process of making this game. Did you start designing it and then get Sony involved for uh, helping to publish it afterwards, or did Sony approach you, or how did that whole thing happen? Uh, well, we started off. Shahan and I um, we met in two thousand seven or eight, something like that. And we started working on uh, like what visual visualizers, music visualizers for his live shows. Um, and that soon became video games. And we made like I don't know, like nine uh, prototypes. Uh, like video game prototypes. And we got funded by the government to do that. But we sort of kept one upping each concept and then in 2009, we hit upon the Sound Shapes concept, uh, and we ran out of money at the same time, so we went to Sony. Ah, oh, so, so the government, which government is that? Sounds like a good government you have, giving you money to make visualizers of video games. <laughs> Who is that? Uh, yeah, it's the Ontario government. They have uh, there's like grants that they give out um, to, like, uh, what's the word? like uh, Artists? Well, no, no. Uh, it's it's like an economic thing. They want to create jobs and stuff. So. Oh, interesting. So we also created jobs. <laughs> yeah, how many jobs did you create? <laughs> Who who'd you hire? A lot more than we thought we would create. <laughs> ah, interesting. So you suddenly became bosses, whether you wanted to or not. Is that what happened? Yeah, I guess so. I mean, it's you know, it's like it's an interesting project because um, we sort of. I mean, it grew bigger than we could handle it, and we needed help. Um, luckily, in Toronto, there's like a lot of our friends are game developers too, and so they helped us out. Like, we got a lot of help from Cappy. Um, we actually grew so big that we grew out of our office, and we had to sort of crash their place for six months. Um, <laughs> it doesn't sound bad at all. So you just kind of became part of Cappy's a great company. So to team with them must have been. Yeah. We're, in the, we're actually in the same office building as them. They're two floors down from us, so uh, we were working in our, in our 
uh, in our office, and at a certain point, we started sort of slowly taking over desks. <laughs> Wow, did you take some of their employees too, or did you just uh, yeah. there's, take there's, a, there's a significant amount of crossover, or there's some there's some crossover between employees and like the two two of the level design main level designers are um, Cappy Cappy guys and the artist um, Vic who did the um, the Hell World album, so the first I guess the first album he's a uh, yeah, and Vic also did uh, he's. Is he the co-creator or something? I don't know. He he does graphics for Super Time Force. Yeah, Vic Nguyen, right? Is that his yeah, name? yeah. Yeah, he's an awesome guy. I met him at um, PAX East this year. Ha! Huh, that's so cool. So it uh, th th that's probably my favorite thing about Sound Shapes is that it's whatever it turned into is this huge collaboration between so many. It almost feels like a compilation uh, as opposed to a, a singular game, uh, a compilation of games made by a variety of different people, which which is, you called it Sound Shapes? Whose idea? You didn't call it Sound Jam? Or Jam Shapes? Because it's a game jam. You made a game jam is what you made. <laughs> but then you shamed, call it Shapes instead of Jams. Was that your idea or was that Sony? Can we blame it on Sony? No, unfortunately we can't blame that on Sony. That's uh, Sound Shapes was... It was, I guess, the working title that we had. I like Sound Shapes. I, 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 don't, know, I, I don't know about yeah. Sound I mean, whatever. <laughs> I'm just kidding around, John. It's a great, it's a perfect name because it is about <laughs> that was an awesome Catman attack you just said. Was that towards me? Did I, did I, uh, do you hate me now? I'm sorry. Let me take it all back by saying Sound Shapes is a great name because it is what I love about this game and a lot of games out right now. Uh, it's happening with Dyad. It's happening with the Bit Trip series. You're taking very easy to digest visuals uh, abstract visuals that don't like, make a lot of work for the eye and uh, using that leftover brain space to uh, let the music do a lot of the talking in the game. So sound shapes is exactly what you get in the game. It's a very nice description. And, and then the main character of the game is a, the whole of a record? Like a music record? Is that what he is? Yeah, it's up to your interpretation. <laughs> it could be that. It could be a Friday. It could be a Bob. Well, I don't know. <laughs> he's, he's really tasty. He looks tasty. He looks delicious. Flavors. <laughs> yeah, he changes colors uh, throughout the game because he swims in green and then he turns green. And a lot of it, it, one of the things that frustrates me about uh, the game, even though I love it, is that uh, upon first playing it, you don't know of how much stuff is going to happen in it, which is true of a lot of video games. But uh, people expect a lot of the time to, to get an idea of everything that will happen in the game real quickly in, in demos. But a lot of stuff happens in sound shapes people not know about. There's swimming, there's flying, there's a bunch of stuff. Uh, was that something that you had trouble trying to convey to people when you're trying to convey to people what sound shapes is? Has it been difficult to, to try to explain the whole thing in a, in a quick sentence to folks? I think, I mean, from the... Well, what you're talking about is like the whole variety of the game. I don't think we ever actually focused on that in any of our uh, whatever promotion or whatever. But um, I, I think I don't know. I feel like we started to do a good job on sort of the whole concept of it's like a musical instrument and a video game at the same time. Mm -hmm. um, I, I, I don't know. What do you think? Like, I think we did. We started to get that across. Yeah, I think. I mean, once people, it is. It is a tough thing to explain initially, I think, you know, a year ago or whenever it was when we were initially, when we started talking about it, um, we did find it really difficult to get across what, I guess, what, you know, what the idea is, because it's kind of weird, like, if you just see it without hearing it, mm. it doesn't really make sense. If you just see the editor without seeing the, the campaign, it doesn't really make sense, and vice versa. It's sort of like you have to, you have to sort of see each individual part and see how they work together to kind of um, get the whole uh, the whole concept and I think that that was a, definitely a challenge for us to try and um, to try and communicate that but I think you know it's we've been really lucky like we've been working with a lot of uh, cool people and people that you know are helping us making videos and and stuff like that and um, everyone who's well not everyone but a <laughs> A good a good percentage of people that that see it or that play it um, seem to be responding to, to that, and I think that that's I mean I don't know I I think there was a time when we were 
scared of, <laughs> terrified that people would just be like, what is this? We don't even know what this is. And it seems like at least, you know, there's a, there's a certain percentage of people out there that are, that are, that are getting, that are getting it. And that's really, that's really exciting for us. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah. I've heard, talked to a lot of people that are really in, in love with the editor. They're in love with the variety because you uh, we were talking before about uh, the amount of variety in the game. You've got, do you pronounce it dead mouse five or dead mouse? It's dead mouse. Isn't it? Did yeah. I say that again? Yeah. yeah. Uh, Beck, you've got Jim Guthrie. You've got uh, art by super brothers. You've got uh, a huge collaboration uh, going on in this game. Um, so there, I'm hoping that gets the feelers out to, to get a lot of different people to come in and, and give it a play. Was that part of your strategy to try to, uh, make the game have as uh, broader appeal by getting different types of people from the, the music and the, and the games industry involved, or did they just kind of fall in your lap? All those famous people. Uh, wait, did you want to, what? Like, you're looking at I know. Me. I'm just. Uh... <laughs> I feel like I'm bothering you guys. I'm no, sorry. it's just. Uh, I'm, not, <laughs> I'm not uh, awake right now, and I had some really powerful scotch yesterday. So, uh, <laughs> no, yeah. I mean, the whole idea was. I mean, we could stick to like the genre or like the types of music that we like, but you know, I think you realize this way before I did. But it's you know, like we're really part of what we're doing is creating a tool so that. Um, other people can play this game and sort of uh, express their own, have their own expressions come out through the game. It's not so much about us. So, yes, we did seek out like um, I don't know, what, like different artists that might sort of appeal. Of course, we we can't help it sometimes when we really like something like the Super Brothers stuff. Mm. Although that does have a lot of appeal too. Now I think about it. So yeah, I mean, I don't know. Do you have anything to add there? It's just <laughs> just trailed off. Just <laughs> it's an hour, right? We gotta, well, yeah. As long as we get like a good half an hour, I feel like. Oh, you're, <laughs> it's going very well. People, yeah. people edit this on their own, right? They, they download it and then edit it together. Sure. Yeah. Story. There's an editor. Um, for well, it. I think that, I mean, the story, like, the whole process of the game was an evolution. I think when we first started, we didn't have any intention to, it was, it was meant to be a much smaller game. And I mean, the, right. the structure of the game was exactly as it is now, but it was meant to be a lot more of a sort of a singular uh, aesthetic. Like in, in that original idea, I guess, would have been um, John's uh, procedural visual uh, style. Um, mm -hmm. What? <laughs> the, uh, the sort of everyday shooter. I guess the thing that he developed in Everyday Shooter just and like squares and shit like that. Just squares, just basically just squares, because that's squares it. and circles. And then um, musically, it would have been uh, like my music, and I guess the original, I guess, idea was for that to be the aesthetic. And and as John said, you know, that <clears throat> the game sort of grew and grew and kept on sort of picking up momentum to the to the point where like we had these opportunities and we had this like it became this thing where we realized that you know. It could be in the hands of someone who <laughs> the person playing the game might not give a shit about my music. Or oh, am I allowed to swear? I didn't. Oh yeah, swear all you want. Okay, yeah. So, and and you know, it's something that we we've talked about a lot, which is sort of like you know, yeah, we want we want to create an in it some a tool that's inspiring for people to to make music with. And you know, when you're when you're making when when you're first getting to learn an instrument, like let's say you pick up a guitar, you know, the first thing that you do is you try and you try and play the music that you like. Right? It's like you try and like play a song that you know. You try and play your favorite artist's whatever, the song, your favorite uh, song by your favorite artist, and that's what inspires you to, to get through like the, the thing that's hard, which is learning the instrument. Like your, your fingers hurt and it sounds like shit for the first six months. And the thing that's encouraging you to, to keep at it is that you have this amazing song in your head. You're like, one day that's going to be coming out of my out of my hands, you know, and that's going to be amazing. And I think that, like, by putting in, you know, like, introducing different uh, musicians and artists and things like that into the game allows us to sort of, like, to, to sort of engage people on that level where they can be like, man, I fucking love this song. And now I have this, I have this game which lets me see exactly how the song's put together. I can see exactly 
how the drum beat is sequenced in the in the drum in the drum machine. I can see exactly how the arrangement is put together, screen by screen. And hope the hope is that you know because of that, because they love music, that'll encourage them to then go into the editor side and be like, well, maybe I'll try and uh, throw something together myself. Maybe I'll I'll start to to experiment with it. And I think that that's that's sort of how the 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 different albums and the different art and the different musicians that sort of philosophy between how that all sort of came together is or at least that's that's part yeah. of it that was awesome answer totally <laughs> nailed it and and speaking of albums yeah. uh, did you guys yeah. listen to, <laughs> <laughs> did you guys listen to albums growing up you don't look old enough for albums you look old enough what? for tapes yeah. john's not john's not old enough for albums but i, but I am what do you mean by yeah. albums like vinyl? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's what we used to call them <laughs> when we were young. I had some feels with the kings. Yeah, but a lot, actually, a lot of the guys that worked uh, that work in the studio are are not uh, are not old. Like Corey Corey Schmidt, who did the graphic art, <laughs> ironically, who made like the the floppy disk loading icon and the cassette tape. Uh, what is it? No, he knows what a floppy disk. He knows what he knows what it is, but I don't feel that he. It ever played, like it was. He, I don't think that he he ever like. He's missing he's, Corey Schmidt on that right now. Let's just solve this right now. He's gonna start chatting me soon and complaining. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's it's interesting that um, on the PS3 in particular, I feel like there's a lot of games lately that are kind of going for a lo-fi feel. Uh, but but the C PS3 and the PS Vita are kind of sold as like technological marvels that can do state-of-the-art graphics and realistic um, skin textures and mouth animations and stuff. Stuff I don't want to... I hate realistic mouths. <laughs> Ugh, don't, I don't like thinking about it. Eh. But, uh, but, and yet Sony has this other side where I feel like they're really pushing for something um, uh, for another audience than the kind of God of War Heavy Rain audience, and that's kind of where you guys came in. Did, did you get a sense working with Sony that they were really attracted to something you could offer that they weren't doing with, with their bigger budget games or where, where were they coming from when they, when they approached you? I, yeah, I mean, we showed them, um, I don't know. I remember the demo we showed them wasn't, it wasn't a lot too. I guess it was basically sound shapes, but it was like, the demo we showed them was literally sound and shapes. Like it was like squares. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> and a drum beat. And I guess you could jump and make your own levels and stuff. But it was like, it was super bare bones. So for them to like look at that and go, "Hey, this might be something. We should fund it." Uh, I think it's really awesome. And and seeing like sort of their the PSM portfolio kind of uh, uh, what do you call it? Like makes me feel a little more comfortable. Like you know, funding journey is not that's not something that I see every publisher doing or. Um, Maybe they would do it, but force them to put guns in it or something. I don't know. Right. Yeah, absolutely. Um, um, and yeah, like we, they never told us we needed to put guns in our game, so that was good too. Uh, like it's, you know, like, you know, I felt like, I mean, the game was supposed to be done like a couple of years ago or something, but we kept <laughs> making it better, and then they're like, okay, well, we'll give you more money to keep making it better. You know, so, you know, there are. I feel like there would have been publishers out there who would have said, "No, you have to finish it now because we budgeted this much money, uh, and we gotta, you know, put our next money into whatever AAA, whatever thing." Mm. So, you know, that was really good. Yeah, it sounds like they had a lot of a lot of faith in you. Did they ever talk to you about that? Like, because you made Everyday Shooter, you're awesome, so don't worry about it. We'll we'll make sure you have enough money to make whatever you want. Or did they just kind of <laughs> keep edging you along? You know, keep pushing you to make it a little bit. Uh, like, yeah, How, tell me all about that whole that whole process. I don't think it really came out like that. I mean, I don't know. We pushed ourselves really hard on this project. I think like, yeah, I don't know. It wasn't it wasn't like here's a blank check. We really loved Everyday Shooter. Here you go. But, <laughs> that would um, be nice though. But no, it, it's um. I think that. Was, yeah. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Well, no, that would be crazy, right? I mean, like, I don't know, I love Everyday Shooter, but I don't think it has that much reach out there. Does it? I don't know. 
I don't know. Yeah, with Sony, it seems like they do have a lot of faith in people that are making games like that, though. So I wouldn't have been surprised if they if they had that much faith in you for an everyday shooter. And it's a pretty good game you made. Thank you. Oh, for that. thanks. Great. <laughs> um, now about the 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 graphic style mixing with the with the art was that something that you knew from the start that you wanted it to be pretty simple abstract graphics uh, to to go along with uh, the theme of of music being just as powerful as the uh, the visuals or was that something that you came up with as you went? Well, the graphics started off like like. Like Sean was saying, like super abstract. This was mostly my stuff, um, and in, in the end, most of my stuff was taken out of the game. But we started, and same with the music. Like we started to realize, well, at least you know, I don't know. I just think video games can look really different than they do now. Mm. Uh, and I wanted to explore a lot of other stuff that you know we don't really have time to do. You know, like whatever, like stop motion or photograph style animation, but the problem with that is like, I quickly realized, I mean this is the first time I made a game that has assets in it. Normally it, I just do everything on my own, so or like through programming. So I didn't realize how important it was to find people who made graphics for video games. Like that's a thing that you have to learn to do. Mm -hmm. So um, you know, some of the more exotic stuff that I wanted to try, we had to sort of leave behind. But I still think we got, like, a good um, a good mix of styles in the game um, in a way that sort of, I don't know. I guess I just had this thing where I wanted the, this video game to not look like a video game. Mm -hmm. um, and not look like game graphics, you know? It's like, yeah, like, I, I wish video games didn't have video game music. Kind of thing, you know, like I just had the tunes. Huh. Uh, that yeah. sound good instead of you know generic breakbeat or you know, oh, of course chip tune. You know, it's like <laughs> not that I hate chip tunes. <laughs> wow. It's just like wow. I don't know. I just feel like it could be something else. Yeah. There's like good music out there. Not that chip tunes aren't good music. I guess I don't know what I'm saying anymore. I know exactly what you're saying. You're saying, okay, we've seen video games look like video games. We've seen video games sound like video games. That's great. But wouldn't it be nice to, to break the, the boundaries a little bit and show that they can do more than that? And I think you totally did that with your game, might I add. It looks like a music video a lot of the time. It looks like a good, comes on at midnight, MTV doesn't really want to play it because there's you know, no sexy dancers in it. One of those good music videos, like it was on 120 minutes when I grew up. That's how your game often looks and sounds. I really like your game. Did I mention that? <laughs> it turned out very well. Good job. And is there is there a chance for us to get more of it? People are already asking me to ask you, can they get Trent Reznor next? Can they get Trent Reznor? And, yeah, and, if you uh, want to send them an email. Like to see Trent? I will send Trent an email. Yes, no probs. <laughs> I'll get that wrapped up by the end of the week. But uh, but uh, in all seriousness, is there a chance to get more content from uh, from Sound Shapes? Not just the, um, the user created content, which is excellent, but kind of sanctioned by your company content put out there. Yeah, it looks like you're about to say something. Oh, um, yeah. I mean, I guess we're we're still figuring that out. I mean, I think there will be stuff coming. It's just that we are right now thinking about what the nature of that is. And of course, like, you know, we have, we, I'm sure me and John both and everyone else working on the game have our, like, dream fantasy list of musicians that we would, you know, want to call up. But, um, you know, you never know how that stuff's going to work out. So I think it'll be a little while before we sort of, like, figure out the plan. And when we do, we'll, it'll be, we'll be excited to share that and see how the how people, uh, you know, respond to that, I think. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, Are there... like, mm -hmm. so, um, I guess the other balance also is that we, we haven't really slept in, in a year. So, <laughs> so you must be that's tired. That's why I'm, like, I look really tired right now is because, you know. Um, so we're trying to like balance putting out new content because, you know, there's a lot of stuff we can do with sound shapes. It's like, yeah, I mean, there's so much stuff we can do. 
um, just in terms of different, uh, like releasing different entities or whatever. But we also have to balance, you know, what the community wants. Um, we need to react to the community and also like our health. Is your the physical health? It's, it's, it's a real thing. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. You don't look tired, by the way. I, I dream of someday looking as spry and youthful as you do, so I don't know. That. <laughs> That's like Kate Moss saying she looks fat in front of a fat person. I look very tired all the time, and I'm I'm quite insulted now. You should just game. shut this down, and I'll take a nap. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be great. I love to. I'm gonna ask uh, Sinistar, the engineer of the show, to throw in some questions in the chat. He'll do that while we're talking. Um, in the meantime, how how is the game? How are you responding to uh? to the sales and, and whatnot. Is it exciting for you to see... Uh, it seems like the game's doing well. Is it is it fun to see a game of yours take off and form a community and all these people are talking about it and stuff like that? What's that experience been like? Are you looking, well, obviously it's awesome. It's not not awesome. It's good. I'm glad it's not not awesome. <laughs> that was like, I think, like, you know, like, when, when we started working on this, I was like, man, if someone would pick this up and like who, who never played music before and all of a sudden started running music that would be the coolest thing and I guess you know I didn't realize until a couple of days ago that's happening like people who don't write music are using this thing and writing music you know like if they're putting on a level that that's a song you know what I mean so it's yeah. like and then they're sending it to their friends and it's like I, I remember that's what I used to do like when I started writing music and it, it was I don't know, a really awesome feeling to have. So it's just great that 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 is happening out there right now. You know? Yeah, that is great. Yeah, I'm happy for you guys. I wish I could do something as good as this someday. Zavari asks, how do you guys and the others who worked on level design get such fine details into levels like hypoglacia? Any tips on budding designers to make levels as pretty as the campaign ones? They are pretty awesome, yeah. Um, Which one's hypoglacia? Is that the ice one or is that one of, the, it's one of the, the desert ones? I think it's the ice one. Yeah, we did the naming at the end of it. I, I, I'm really bad with names. So. That's okay. Yeah, I think it was the ice one, which has some really nice assets in it and some interesting design choices. Again, I wish people knew about all the interesting design choices in your game. It's more than just a blob jumping on things. A lot of cool stuff <laughs> happens in there. Well, okay, so here's like here's my... Because this is the weird thing about sound shapes is this is the first platformer I ever made, and it's probably the third or fourth platformer I ever played. Mm. So wow, I didn't know that. I, I had to like, we had to. Well, I guess myself mostly I had to learn about not only what a platformer is, but what I would like in a platformer. Mm -hmm. And so you know, all these sound shapes is sort of what I settled on. Um, and what I mean, I don't, I don't. This isn't necessarily the right answer, but this is just what we did. Hopefully, you'll do not what we did, so that there's some variety out there. I mean, you can start out doing well. Anyways, whatever. So, like, my thing was, you know, each screen has its own focus. There's like usually one challenge. Can you go into it? You see, you see the entrance, you see the exit, and you see the obstacle. And it's sort of, even before you do the challenge, you start to think, oh, in your mind, like your mind races forward a little bit. And you think, oh, I'm going to, whatever, slide down this ice bridge, and then, I, oh, i got to avoid that stomper, and then I'll stick to the wall, and I'll go up. It's sort of like, you sort of, sort of play this um, video in your head before you actually do it, you know what I mean? And, that, and doing that is fun. It's like, you, you should be able to take a screenshot from the game and sort of imagine, you know, like, I don't know, when I was a kid, I would look at screenshots for video games, and I'd think, oh, I could do this, and I could do that, and I could I sort of it let, good screenshots let my imagination fly. So I sort of think the same thing for a screen of sound shapes. Um, and then, obviously, like, if you step, so that's from, like, a screen-to-screen -screen basis, and then if you step back, you sort of want to chain them together so that they make sense. So it's not just, like, this thing, and then this totally unrelated thing, and then this completely unrelated thing. There's got to be like a thread that kind of sort of combines them all. And if you pull away from that, then you start thinking about like, what is what is the story of this level? Like, like I like talking about micro narratives, and in Corporeal, that you know that I think that was the most successful, I don't know, implementation of that idea, where it's like 
even like you know when like the second level of corporeal when you when you're going through um, and you're seeing the different like the different floors the different levels mm -hmm. and you, you never actually go onto those floors but they're all doing something they're all they're not just slapped there to look pretty there there's actually like a little story there like there's this guy with the coffee cup he's supervising he's like peering over the shoulder of this guy who's working away working away and he's his computer is connected to like whatever this spark computer or this garbage pile or whatever so it's like that that stuff sort of adds a lot of um, I don't know I think like game game it's not gameplay the way we think of it but it adds some play to it it makes you think about uh, what you're walking through so definitely think about like what is this level um, what is the micro narratives that are happening throughout um, narrative and it doesn't have to be like Bob went to buy some milk and then he didn't have enough change so he put you know it doesn't have to be like a story like that but Mm -hmm. It's just not random, you know what I mean? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, for those who haven't played the game, Corporeal is the album by Jim Guthrie and Super Brothers. And I love it a lot for, for the reasons you just described. It gives you such a strong sense of place and doesn't waste your time with a lot of extra information. Just gives you enough information to kind of cause your imagination to do the rest of the work while giving you tons of just raw atmosphere feeling with both the music and the uh, visuals. Yeah, yeah really the other good. thing we did was we always made sure that, like, if you close, like, the scene should be super distinct so that you close your eyes and I said one thing to you. Like, if I said, I don't know, corporeal garbage piles, you'll be like, okay, I know what level that is. Mm -hmm. And, you know, like, if I say ice world to you, you're like, Oh yeah, that's called what's called beyonder hypoglacia. You know what I mean? It's right. like you want your. Well, I don't know. I, I mean, this this isn't necessarily the right answer. Like, there's no whole like complete right answer of video game design. But this is just where we're coming from. Sure. Which was uh, distinct enough that when you close your eyes, you and you hear one word, you'll know what level we're talking about. And I think uh, I think part of the it seems like part of the question he's asking is about. Uh, about visual design, and I think that, um, especially with the Colin stuff and some of the stuff in um, in Hello World, um, you know, like we, well, I I always think like I'm not, I should preface this by saying I was not involved in the <laughs> actual designing of any of the visuals in the in the game. So, but this is sort of my I guess take on it, and from from helping design the editor as well. I think like. A lot of the philosophy is like kind of like making cool things out of simple shapes, right? So there's like, you know, there's there's things like um, that's a children's uh, a children's uh, illustrator at at Emberly or whatever. I don't know if you know what I'm talking about, but he has he's a very distinct visual style, and he has like a set of uh, books which are basically like teaching children how to draw books. But essentially, everything that he draws is like out of these basic shapes, right? So you know, and I'll start off, I'll say basically, okay, if you know how to draw a circle and a triangle, then you can draw this bird. Mm. And all you need to do is, all it is is a combination of these very simple, primitive uh, shapes, right? And that's a pretty empower, empowering thing to say to somebody, right? It's like, oh, well, you already know how to draw this because you know how to draw the basic parts already. Mm -hmm. um, and I think with sound shapes, like anything you see in any of the levels that you think looks cool, especially in... in um, in the, the level that um, this person's talking about, which is the uh, in, in Beyonder, um, all those cool things are built out of those three basic shapes, right? There's three sh there's three ground shapes in, in, in the game: um, a circle, a square, and a triangle. And basically, everything, all that cool like futuristic stuff, is all drawn out of those basic shapes. So I think that that like I mean th that's not really like an answer. That doesn't tell you how to do it, but I think that that's you know, you can you can look at that and, and and sort of like reverse engineer or see how the thing was put together. It's not there's no magic. There's no there's no tools that um, Colin Manser, who's the artist um, <clears throat> the artist uh, that uh, worked on that record, he didn't have any special tools that you don't have that you don't have access to in the editor, right? He's he was working with exactly the same set of uh, visual uh, visual uh, toolkit that you have uh, that 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 ships with the game. So anything that you see is, is, is doable by you. And that, that applies both, obviously both to the visuals, but also to the music as well. So 
yeah, that it's uh, showing the players that they can make it too. That seems to be kind of reoccurring, uh, reoccurring thing you're saying is that that's one of the main goals you had was to give people the inspiration and also the the confidence to make their own stuff. Which leads me to want to ask if, if someone were to say, eh, I played the campaign, I liked it, but I didn't do anything with the editor." <laughs> to the editor. I don't want to make stuff. That sucks. Or if they said, ah, I love the editor. I made tons of levels, but I didn't play any of yours because eh, I wasn't interested. Which, uh, which response, which of those two things would, uh, how would that make you feel? Would one make you feel worse than the other or would you be fine either way? Um, wait, so is it campaign? I didn't play yeah, that. if someone's like, I played the campaign, but I hate the editor or didn't bother with it. Or if someone said, I love the editor, but didn't bother a campaign. Um, which one would make you feel like, well, they still got the, um, you know, what I was really hoping people would get out of this thing, or neither? It's just a weird question I made up. Hope it's okay. Well, yeah. I mean, I don't, I don't know if I'll feel anything like. <laughs> I don't know if I'll feel like. I don't know, like. Yeah. I wouldn't be angry or anything. I just feel like this person doesn't like sound games. <laughs> yeah. That's yeah. fine. Like, whatever. Well, I don't like well, that. You know, but like, what if they love the editor but didn't love the campaign? Would they still love sound shapes then? No, kind of? I think they love the editor but not the campaign. I, I feel pretty good about that. But they didn't like the campaign. But they did like, uh, I don't know. I don't know. Think about it. We'll come back to it later. If, so if something hits you, you want to answer it later, yeah. let me know. Yeah, I think we were, I think that was, a, that was definitely something that I thought about a lot was that, you know, they taught, they, you know, when we were developing the, you know, when we were making the game, people would tell us, you know, statistics, statistics about uh, games that have creation modes, and like, oh, it's such a low percentage of people that ever bother even going into the, ever bother going into the creation side of it. Mm. Uh, and I think that, um, you know, that was definitely something that we, you know, when we were designing it, we, I guess, we did everything that we could to try and encourage people to to do it because we knew that that was going to be a challenge to get people over to that side. Like we, we consciously introduced them at the same or you know, right. We introduced them both at the beginning of the game. So we know that there's these two sides and we try to give them sort of equal weighting in the, in the menu, like, so that it's not like campaign and then editor underneath. It's like you're in this hub and there's these sections around you, you know, there, there no one section is given sort of, uh, precedence over over the other and that was a big that was like a conscious decision to try and make the creation side um, as big a part of the course core experience as as anything else um, and I think you know we I mean I don't we don't really know I guess we don't really know like actual numbers about it but certainly I we've seen a lot of people um, in reviews and also just like people um, on Twitter or whatever um, Talking about the game, saying that they don't, they don't usually like level editors, but this one they found was fun or whatever. And I think for me, that's really, that's uh, that's really great because it means that it's somebody who might have not, you know, not necessarily have have been inclined. To, I mean, there are certain people who are hardcore level editor, guys, like you know, there's all these like little hardcore little big planet guys that like came over to the Sound Shapes community and just started like killing everything, like they were just like making crazy levels because they brought their world of level, you know, design experience um, from that game to this game, which is great, of course. Um, but I think for the people that, and I, I would count myself amongst those who most of the time in level creation games, I get bogged down in a lot of the details and I, and I, and I, and I, I find it difficult to come up with something that's, uh, that I'm happy with. Um, it seems like at least some of those people have come over to or have tried sound shapes and found that it's a you know they have had a rewarding experience in an editor that they never thought you know that they weren't expecting I guess so that I mean for me that's that's pretty cool. Absolutely, and and for people who haven't played it yet, I'll I'll tell you as an unbiased reviewer, the editor is so easy to use, and you can I haven't made a level I'm happy with yet, but I you can just easily sketch something out and. In, I don't know, five minutes. Uh, you just place the sounds and place the objects and place the enemies um, without having to give it a lot of thought. You can kind of let your unconscious do some of it and just scatter yeah. stuff around randomly and, and experiment with it and, and kind of shape it that way instead of having to 
really labor. So yeah, it's a it's a one of my favorite level editors. Go so on. one of the things that you were doing with that level editor at the start was um, getting glass water. Oh, uh, he's coming back. Don't worry, guys. He's coming back. <laughs> I believe it. You can handle the show. It's the you awkward. Know. You want him back or no? Uh, <laughs> Anyway, uh, what was the second? Oh yeah, yeah, it was um, early on. We were, we had this idea of like, so in music, you can, if you're recording whatever a, a keyboard part or whatever, you could turn on quantization mode, and then it'll be like, if you fuck up, it'll put the notes in the right place, basically. So it was sort of that. I mean, that that's it's not as simple as that, but roughly, just roughly from that concept, we had the idea of quantizing uh, editor action. So basically, taking out all the error states, all the bad states, or states in the game, or in, 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 in the process, in the flow of making a level, aren't interesting. Um, so, so that every, for every action you do, that changes the game. And that makes you want to go to, to hit play and try what you've just done. So like, that's why it's like, you know, yeah, that's why it's so simple. It's like, you, you select the ground, you place a ground, that's it. You've changed the level. You can actually like play with that now, and and that I think that's where that stream of consciousness comes from. It's, you you can experiment. It's like, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I agree, hundred percent. I feel like a jerk. I didn't do enough uh, listener questions yet. Uh, Sermon asks. Edmund McMillan said in Indie Game the movie that Canadians have easy mode life. Is that true? You just have. Uh, you know, no fails. It'll play itself for so, you. So, what context did he say that in? Because I didn't, I haven't watched the movie. Yet. It's a pretty good movie. Um, I'm trying to remember the context. I've only seen it once. I think he's talking. It could be about the fact that Canadians have like artist grants and um, job creating grants to the government that can help them get their games done. I, I believe that's it. And, and better police and better healthcare. It might have been healthcare too. There's a lot of different ways that I envy Canadians, and your game development scene's incredible. The, half the people who have ever been on the show are from Canada, and they're all great. Yeah, so, so. that didn't happen by accident, by the way. Like, the, yes. the art scene. Um, and, you know, like, I guess that's... Hmm. It's true. We do have good grants. We do pay a lot more tax, I think. Mm -hmm. um, I think so. To get those grants. Um, and we do a lot of business shit, but it's like, it, yeah, no, definitely, it's great that we have those grants. I don't think that's cross Canada. Um, I don't know much about the other provinces, but in Ontario, I, I think there's there's probably grants in Montreal and probably in Vancouver, I don't, I don't really know, but in Ontario, um, we do have a lot of our opportunity. The, the arts grants aren't, aren't so great because they sort of have their idea of what art is and video games doesn't fall under that. Oh, huh, interesting. Um, but for the business grants, yeah, it, it's it's good. Um, but the thing is, it wasn't always like that. Like when you, when I started out in Toronto, there was no, there actually was no indie game scene. So I think like you make you make an indie game right now, you're like, that's really good. That that's like easy mode. That that already is easy mode because it's like you have the support group, you have people who understand what indie games are. But when I started, there was no indie games. There was Triple A, and then there was Freeware, and most mm -hmm. people didn't know about. Free I didn't know about Freeware, mm -hmm. um, and it wasn't until I like met Reagan Amir from MetaNet that I realized, hey, th I'm not crazy. There's there's this, there's these two other people in the world who also want to do what I do, whereas like everyone else around me was saying, you're fucking crazy, dude. You should just go get a job. This is a hobby. Like, I don't know. <laughs> so like, I guess that that. Part of the statement rubs me the wrong way. You know what I mean? Like that in easy mode, because I'm like, wait, you're living in easy mode. That was built for you because people know what indie games are, and they didn't before. You know, there was a, there was there's Steam. Like Steam didn't exist before. There was no XBLA. You know, there was there was no PSN. It was just like, how the fuck do we do this? And there were already people doing it, by the way. Um, probably like what's his name? Positech guy, like I think he's been doing it for years. Is that the guy whose like website doesn't have any graphics or anything? It's just like a list of like fifty games he made. Uh, I, I don't know. I haven't been on the internet in a while, but it's like uh, he made gratuitous space battles or something. Like yeah, yeah, yeah. A lot of cool. No, I'm, no, that's Pom Pom. 
fuck. Anyway, whatever. I so many guys. I don't know. That's right. Yeah, but yeah. yeah I, like, it wasn't until N Plus hit that there, you know, like, then people bought an indie game. It was like, that was kind of crazy. You know what I mean? And, and that, I don't know, I'm sure there was other stuff happening as well. But for me, that was my reference point was M Plus, one on XVLA, made by two people, made tons of money. I've never seen that before, but it gives me hope that I can do it too. And you know, when was that? Was that, what, 2007? Wasn't that? No, no, 2007 was everything. So it must have been 2005 or something like that. Yeah, yeah. Somewhere around yeah. then. You know what I mean? Like, like I, I can't stress enough how fucking shitty life is when you're trying to do something and, like, all your friends are telling you that you're just a fuck, like, that you're, like, you're chasing a hobby. You know, like, this is, like, I live my life to do this. You know, it's not a hobby. It's not something I actually do for fun. You know what I mean? So yeah. it's like, I mean, I have, it gives me satisfaction, obviously, but it's a lot of fucking hard work. It's mostly hard work. So it's, yeah, it's not, I don't know. Anyways. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I, but, however, however, I didn't see the movie. I don't know what context he's, he's saying that stuff in. Might you know, have been about health insurance. I've talked to Edmund before. He's a swell guy. Yeah, he's a neat dude. Yeah, <laughs> so, he won't be on the show because he can't get up early enough. So you guys already beat him in that part of your easy mode life. You actually woke up to be on my show. Thank you. <laughs> I know it's not always easy. Um, wow, so many. There aren't any. Okay. Um, John, you said that this you've only played a few platformers before. What what were those platformers, out of curiosity? And how did they influence you in, in going about designing sound shapes? Um, so my friends made end, so I obviously played that, and I obviously played Mario, which previously I just did not like Mario, but having made a platformer now, I, you know, I realize, I still don't really like the game, but I really appreciate, you know, like, all the genius that went into that game. I'm talking about the original Mario, I guess. The very first one, Super uh, Mario Bros. 1. Like, I don't know, I, I might not know my video game history very well, but it was like, I don't know, it was like Space Invaders, Space War, Breakout, and then out of nowhere, Mario. It's like, you're this guy, and you jump. And you jump on people's heads. Like, where did that come from? Or like this idea that y you can jump higher, like you get bigger when you eat the mushroom, or like you shoot fireballs. Or even like when you jump, and if you let go of the, like just the physics of the Mario jump is kind of, it's pretty intricate. It's like you hold... When you're holding jump, you have a different gravity than, you know, when you're not holding jump. Like, where did that come from? What what decision making went into that? And that like, that was all new. You know what I mean? It's like that basically invented a genre. I don't I don't know. You might know video game history better than me. I don't know if there was a platformer before that. Maybe like, maybe back then in the '80s there was like, or whatever, there was like an indie or freeware scene or underground scene there. Um, Scene. A little bit, yeah. yeah. With like Apple II, PC, and stuff like that. But yeah. in terms of running and jumping and physics and stuff like that, I can't think of one before. Yeah, and then it's the idea that you can run. And when you run, I guess that makes sense. You run, you jump river. But that's, I don't know, it's... Like, even, like, little intricate things, like, where you run and then duck, and then you slide under things. Or, like, mm -hmm. I don't know. It, there's a lot of genius in that game. But um, you didn't like it before. That's interesting to me. What didn't you like about Mario, Super Mario Brothers 1? I don't know. I guess I don't like... I, this is probably why there's checkpoints everywhere in sound shapes. I just don't like... Play, because the game is not procedurally generated, it's not. It's, it's mostly memorization. You're basically playing Guitar Hero, mm. where, where the outcome of the game is... I don't know, you get to the next level and you get to see more stuff. Um, which isn't bad, it's just not something that I did. So, if I'm going to go and make a game that's linear, I don't want to restart from the beginning. Linear meaning, like, the micro interactions you're doing is linear. Mm -hmm. and, uh, like, you know, there's some procedural games where when you play it, sure, the story is linear or whatever, or, like, the, the way the stages were is linear, but moment to moment, what you're thinking about is not linear. You're like, like, I don't know if I should go left or right. Even as simple as that. Should I go left or right? I don't know. But in, but in like, a platformer, it's like, I, I know what I'm supposed to do. I'm just executing this, like, thing. It's like a recital, kind of. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, yeah, I guess that's what I don't like about it. 
Well, that uh, brings me to a point I was hoping I was going to get to make about sound shapes. One of the things that, one of the more interesting risks I think you took with it is because a lot of games that have music as a focus, and they want you to like play the music. They'll have you on an auto run sort of feel, kind of like Guitar Hero is basically like an auto run platformer in a lot of ways because the obstacles are just coming at you and you got to deal with them on time, which will coach you to do the timing right, which will make the music play the way the designer wanted you to do. But with Sound Shapes, you didn't do that. Like if you if you speed run the game, it definitely makes a different song than if you don't. But you gave us the option to play however we wanted at whatever pace we wanted and. Uh, was that a conscious decision you made to kind of keep away from the auto run platformer like Vib Ribbon and uh, Bit Trip Runner? Those were all kind of music platformers, uh, but you you shied away from that. Was that something you did intentionally, or did it just kind of happen naturally? Oh, that's interesting because I guess when we started, that was never an option anyway, so we never thought about it. We never thought no. about the auto. Run. I guess I don't know, like Death Wall was that auto run? We had the death ball. So we used to have this thing where, you know, like, have you played this game called Dino Run, Dino Run? Like, I think so. Is that the one where the thing's coming at you? Yeah, it's just like you're this dinosaur and the apocalypse is happening, so you gotta run. Mm -hmm. You're a dino. A dino run. Um, so we sort of had that. We called it the death ball. And I guess that's the closest thing we got to what you're describing. So basically, you just have to keep going or else this wall would come and kill you. Right. And there's parts in the um, in the cities level where the bomb is expanding at you all the whole time. Those are really stressful, exciting mm -hmm. times. I'd add that a little bit. I like stressing people out. I guess <laughs> it's a fun stress. Yeah, it's a good time. Like playing music is a fun stress, so it worked. But I'm sorry, I, I derailed you. What were you saying? Um, but yeah, I guess we never like got to a point where that was a thing. You know what I mean? Like it was, I don't know, it was wanted to make a video game video game. Mm -hmm. So we chose a genre genre that sort of was ubiquitous enough that everybody would know it. You know, like people don't play shooters. Shooters being shoot 'em ups. Mm -hmm. But like surely everyone's played Mary. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So I don't know, it's just that. I guess yeah, I'm trying to think <clears throat> Yeah, we never you know. Yeah, I think it's sort of I mean, sort of what John was saying before you know, when you play something like uh, Guitar Hero and for, ex I guess, to a certain lesser extent, like the Mario, like platforming levels where, you know, the screen is is sort of moving with you at a, at a, at a pace, like it, it definitely feels more like, uh, like John described it as doing a recital, like it, it reminds me of like, uh, <laughs> like piano lessons or something like that, where where there's this set, there's this authoritative text, right? And that is whatever, that is that is the composite, that is like the piece of paper that is the correct way to do this. And your job as the person interacting with it is to reproduce these these movements in in this way. And at the end, there's a, somehow you're, you're graded on your, your percentage or your amount of correctness as graded compared to this to this piece of paper. Mm -hmm. And I think um, for us, like we, I think we both, you know, you know, we both come from sort of musical backgrounds, but not necessarily from that musical background. We come from more of like a we like to hang out and just like jam and like improvise. It's more of like an improvised thing, and more of a just like play by ear and like you know keep making mistakes until the last mistake you made sounds actually good, and then that's not a mistake anymore. That's the song. You know what I mean? And I think we both sort of come from that, you know, philosophy or whatever, that, that way of, 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 of playing music. And the, the idea of the, uh, you know, like eight-year-old uh, robot kids doing like crazy, like whatever piano stuff, like that's not part of our, <laughs> that's not where we come from, right? We're just like, we're just like guys, mm -hmm. jam or whatever. That's, uh, I'm telling you the sound jam. Yeah. <laughs> So, up it was meant to be. I'm going to ask Sinistar if he wants to tweet out some more questions. Sinistar, tweet. Oh, he can probably hear me. Oh, yeah, I forgot. He can hear me <laughs> talking, too. <laughs> um, did you play any of the Morph Ball levels in Metroid? 
Because when I describe sound shapes to people and they're like, well, what's it like? Is it like Super Meat Boy? Is it like Mario? I hate to just say to them, well, it's like, this is like sound shapes. It's not like anything you played that doesn't tell them enough. So I get lazy and I say, it's kind of like the morph, morph ball levels uh, from Metroid because you can stick to walls and you can jump. But you have to kind of decide whether you want to use the safety of being able to stick to walls or whether you want to uh, use the advantage of being able to run to get through a problem. So you're having to, to weigh the pros and cons of your two big uh, powers, which is to stick to walls and to, and to run. Um, was that something that influenced you at all? Or, or where did that come from? Because it's a really interesting dynamic. It's one that doesn't demand a lot of like pain out of the player, but it does cause the player to constantly have to think about the best way to interact with their environment. Um, which I which I liked a lot. So yeah, where'd that come from? Uh, it didn't come from Metroid, unfortunately. I, I don't think I've ever played Metroid. Uh, <laughs> so I wonder what you'd think of it. Did you not like Nintendo at all? No, I, no, Nintendo's great. Hold on, my phone's ringing. Sorry, can you just? Uh, uh, you can answer it. Um. That so like. Yeah. I guess I don't like. Okay, so I'm gonna say some stuff. But this should not stop you from making these types of levels, because people love this stuff. I happen to not like it, okay? Sorry. So, I'm not a big fan of nonlinear games. Nonlinear, like, micro nonlinear, I love. But, like, glo like macro nonlinear, I guess you'd call it. Define that, if you don't mind, because that's... So that's um, like games where it's terms. like, you're in this world, and then it's up to you to go find what's fun. You gotta go mm. find quests, and you gotta... Backtrack a lot, and you get maybe you spend twenty minutes going someplace, and then final you just hit a dead end, and that's that's not fun to me. So I don't like. I'd rather it, it actually feels like work for me because it's like my job is to like try some stuff, and it might be fun. I'm supposed to look for fun and then bring that to you. So like when I do that, when I find myself doing that in a video game, I just want to shoot myself. I don't want to do that. So, but you know, like obviously, sound shapes could have been, or like all the levels are very linear, macro linear. If you will. Um, hmm. but you know, you can make them macro nonlinear, and I think it's still valid. It's not like it's not. There's no right or wrong answer. You know, it's a preference thing. Um, I do think that when the game is linear, macro linear, you, you can spend more time crafting each and every piece of it. Um, it's like I don't know, like a song. It's like you can, or like a movie. You can like, you can really pay attention to um, what's happening moment to moment and how these things are strung together. And that's that kind of excites me a little bit more. Uh, I forgot what the original question was. Oh yeah, so where did the sticky ball come from? So where it came from is, um, so I don't know. If this was a good idea, but <laughs> in the game now. So uh, the idea was the game is supposed to be simple to play because it's all about music. Mm -hmm. um, and remember when I was talking about the whole quantization, like the level editors are quantized. So the problem was, what if I put a ground all the way on the top of the screen? How do you, like, how do you, what, what do you do? You know what I mean? So if you can stick, if you were a sticky ball, you could stick on the underside of things. It just made it like a lot easier for you to grab all the notes and. And then the default of the game was it's easy. And if you wanted to make it challenging, you had to like sort of put a challenge there. And that's that's sort of where it came from. And the whole running, uh, like when you run, you disengage sticky. It's just like I just I don't know. It's like shooting, like in everyday shooter. It's like what shooting in a shooter. It's, I find it really weird that shooting and you and and not shooting doesn't change anything in the game. So in everyday shooter, when you shoot, you move slower. It's like you have to. There's this trade-off that you're doing. Mm -hmm. So in sound shapes, it's the same thing. You have the sticky ability, but if you want to move faster, sometimes you do. You got to disengage that. And it makes that feeling of risk that comes from running. So my favorite thing about Super Mario Brothers and Super Meat Boy is so you got to run in order to deal yeah. with certain challenges. But running makes you head towards your Hazard faster, which is scary, but it's also empowering at the same time. You you, you pulled that off in a way that didn't feel like a ripoff of. So that is that is something that's really awesome about Resetto games. That Resetto games being like whatever Mario or 
mm. that I didn't realize, I didn't think that I would like um, mm -hmm. while working on sound shapes is, yeah, it's just like, I don't know, I guess it's like trying to pull off like a 360 judo or whatever when you're skateboarding. It's like when you do it, you're like, holy shit, I did that. Wow, what an awesome feeling. Mm -hmm. um, I, yeah, now I totally have like a new appreciation of, of that sort of style of gameplay where it's just like, yeah, I'm doing this recital thing, but when I do it, it's going to feel so good. But if there's a little improvisation in it, like a 360, what did you talk about skateboarding? Some sort of... I don't know. I made that up. I don't actually... I thought, it sounded real. I totally believe you, 100%. But um, you know, I, think, so. I think what he's saying is that even, even I think, you know, earlier we were talking about, uh, what we were talking about, like sort of like games that are on rails or as, mm -hmm. as, and I think what he was, what John was saying, that there's still a lot of room for, wake up. Let's do it. Let's do it. 29 uh, minutes to go. You can do it. You're doing uh, awesome. What he was saying was that uh, you know there's still a lot of room for interpretation with that with within that you know which is which is what you know of course uh, my you know what I was the way that I was describing things was pretty simplistic of course there's a difference between like a great whatever a pianist playing a piece versus a you know a person who's just starting even though they're even if they're playing the exact same notes obviously there's you know a difference in interpretation and in a way that you can tell. A great performer from whatever, and mm -hmm. I think that's sort of like the parallel that that John is sort of saying um, that he sort of appreciated in those in those types of games where even though there there is sort of a set uh, even though there is sort of a set uh, I don't know what do you call it like way of completing it within that you can find. Um, a cool space to to experiment, and when you actually do it, it it's a uh, it's it's a uh, feels great. Feels good in your in your brain box. <laughs> Absolutely. What are the uh, what are the we talked a little bit about the platformers that might have influenced you a little bit. What are the music games that influenced you, if any? Were there are there other games that you saw what they did and thought, oh, I'd like to take that and modify it a little bit, or? Or even anti role models. Are there games that you played where, like, I want to make sure we don't do anything like that and how it interpreted music? Um, yeah, any games like that? I don't know, like Electro Plankton, Tenorion. Yeah, I think that I think that the hu the things that got me. I mean, this Sound Shapes is the first game project that I have ever was ever involved in, and before that, I you know wasn't paying that much attention to games, and the the, the things that got me, you know, I was I was a you know, a musician before. You know, I guess I still I am still on now, but I was. He still, only, he still writes music, guys. I was still doing. I was mainly doing music then, but I was. Um, you know, my I had a background in programming, and I, the games that got me interested in, um, in, uh, or that got me interested in games. Like I went on a tour in in Japan, and our, our good friend who who now works on Sound Shapes, uh, Jason uh, DeGru, um, who's uh, also known as Six Nine Five Five. Uh, he was living there at the time, and he showed me a bunch of um, cool stuff like um, uh, Res, of course, and uh, Electroplankton, and at that time, like I think Tenorion was just oh man, Rhythm Tango, Rhythm. Mm. That was later, but oh, yeah, man. that those kinds of things. And, and later, later on, I got to you know meet and hang out with um, Toshio Iwai a little bit. Um, and I think for me, like in terms of like musical interaction, or in terms of like somebody who found a cool way to like mix music creation with cool visuals and in a like accessible package you know that's definitely a huge inspiration and anyone who's seen who's seen sound shapes and has seen those games can can probably see you know the lineage there <laughs> where um, you know definitely that was a big inspiration for for me and I think for both of us so um, in terms of like the music side I think that that's um, that's where a lot of you know that comes from. I don't know if you have any other. Yeah, musically. Yeah, I mean, the, you know, whatever. There's like Lumin Luminez started Everyday Shooter, and obviously that there's obviously a trajectory from that game to this game too. But mm -hmm. I think um, I think mainly Electroplankton and Tenor, basically Toshio Iwai's work. It's, uh, it's you mentioned shit. Rhythm Tengoku in there. It's one of my favorites. Was that an influence at all, or is that just a game you like? I don't. I don't know if you could 
find a direct connection, but it's definitely a game we both really, really liked at that time. And like, it's definitely something that I don't, I don't know if there's anything that specific about it, but I just think the way that, I mean, it just had such, such a interesting way of having people um, engage with. Yeah, and it was just the, the quality of the game is so like there's no filler in it, and it's so clever. Like every fucking second, it's like something hilarious happens, or something super clever happens. I think I don't know. Yeah, I, I don't know. If there's a direct thing, but obviously, I, as a designer, I aspire to write make something of that caliber. Funny you would mention that because while I was playing Sound Shapes, I was thinking. Well, Rhythm Tengoku, I love all three games in the series a lot. And what I love about them is it gives you visuals that inspire you to feel the way the music makes you feel. Even if the music doesn't sound like two wood nymphs playing sexy volleyball, which is something that happens in the new um, uh, Rhythm Heaven. I don't know if you played it on the Wii. It's pretty good. It's not as good as the Game Boy one, but it's good. But the music makes you feel that way, even though it, it, it's not something you would normally associate it. They're willing to, to make those connections that uh, you wouldn't normally think of. And that's exactly what your game did. Your game might be the only game that does that better than Rhythm Tango Goku. Well, that's what I thought. Yep. You nailed it, guys. I don't think that's true, but yeah, I think now that you've mentioned you that... You nailed it! Sorry. <laughs> now that you mentioned it, I do think that that's, that is something that we, that we sort of... Uh, you know, that comes from Rhythm Tengoku is that like crazy, crazy, super tight one-to-one -one relationship between what's happening on the screen, what's happening in your eyeballs, and what's happening in your, your ear balls, yes. you know. It's uh, <laughs> ear holes. Ear holes, yeah. So it's like they're, they're both amplifying each other, right? Every, everything you see on the screen is telling you about the sound and, every, and, and vice versa. Everything you're hearing is, is, is telling you about uh, what's happening on the screen. You're so focused on this one aspect of the music when you're playing that game that it almost becomes like this one organ. It's like almost like even though what you're seeing is like whatever, like a screw going into like a weird rivet in a factory or whatever, it feels like you're watching mm. a musical instrument being played. It's almost like that. Like the connection is so strong that it feels like you're actually seeing, you're actually seeing the music being created in front of you. And I think that that, you know, in a, in, a, in, a, in a way, like, that's what we aspire to do in Sound Shapes, is to have every screen that you're looking at. Or when you're looking at a screen in Sound Shapes, it should look like you're, uh, it should feel like you're watching a musical performance. Like, you should see, you should feel like you're almost like you're watching a, a band play or something. You're seeing stuff, guys doing things, but, you know, each thing, each thing you're seeing is so connected to, to all the various parts of the music that it, it becomes like an amplification of, of, uh, of the sound. So yeah, I, it, it looks the way the game sounds. Right. That makes sense. Looks how it sounds and feels how it looks and sounds how it feels. Very good job. Yeah, I like it a lot. Uh, another question from LaFay. Hi, LaFay. He's a great guy. Do you think multiple contributions from both celebrities and level designers into one focused place is a future in indie gaming? with each giving their little bit of creative spin, or was it too much of a hassle to try and organize it? Oh, yeah, I, I organized an album once. Uh, I have this dumb show called Talking to Women about video games, and people like the theme song, and I had to organize an album for it, and it was hell. I don't know how the hell you guys did it with, like, actual superstars, because mm -hmm. I just did it with, um, you know, video game uh, music uh, makers and people that aren't super world famous. But anyway, I'm sorry. Answer, answer the man's question. I apologize. Yeah, I, I mean, I, 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 I think, like, I don't think that's the future of indie games. However, I do, like, obviously if two people have, or whatever, a set of people have that connection, um, that spark, like, yeah, that might happen. Like, I don't, I don't know, I don't, I don't think this game is like, oh, look, we should put celebrities in video games now, because that's, that's not what sound shapes is about. <laughs> and it just ha happens to have celeb you know, like I mean, you know what I mean? Like, I think that was a concern too. Like that that was one of the concerns we had when when that stuff started to happen. We didn't want it to be about that. We didn't want it to be it's you know, a game about um, whatever, about about these sort of uh, celebrities. We wanted it to be a game that 
had them involved in a meaningful way, not just like in a way where we just have their name on the box, basically. Yeah, it's like it's like here's this cool game, here's this cool concept, here's some examples of what you can do in it. By the way, here's something that Beck did to like sort of you know wet your appetite or whatever. You know what I mean? It's like mm -hmm. to sort of broaden your idea of what this thing can do. Or like here's some stuff Dead Mouse did, and here's some stuff that Super Brothers Jim Guthrie did. You know, so it's like yeah, like I don't know. In the end, pe people come together and work together because there's a connection there that, that makes it work. It's like, you know, it's, there's a connection. Just, this guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, you're connected. Look at you guys. Come I'm going to for that. This beautiful picture. <laughs> I personally am mad a little bit. I kind of want to kick Beck off your game. It's too late now. Even though his <laughs> levels are fantastic, it's, it's frustrating me. It happened with Rhythm Tengoku, too, funny enough. Uh, when Beyonce was promoting Rhythm Heaven for the DS in the United States, everyone just called it the Beyonce game. Like, people that weren't already intimately acquainted with the series. And, and then they bought it, and they're like, Beyonce wasn't in this? What? And then they took it back, and the game didn't sell that well. And some people are, are just buying your game for the Beckness, which I really hope that they see it as more than that. Because though the Beck levels are great, there's a lot more to it, and to, to me, the, the Beck is a, a, a garnish, whereas the real meat of it is the design. And then, and just so people are clear, did you guys design all the levels, but Beck just applied the music, and then it was Pyramid, oh, I'm blanking on his name all of a sudden, the, the, yeah, who did the visuals for that. Did they just do the, the graphics and the music, but you designed all the levels yourself? Yeah, we designed all the levels. Um, we, as we were saying earlier on the show, is it a show? On the show, um, Cappy lent us a couple of level designers, um, and you know Matthew Kumar helped out too. So, um, yeah, it wasn't just like us two. Like a lot of people worked on this game. Right, but you two really started it before you knew it was gonna blow up into a big PSN uh, PS Vita exclusive, which is so awesome. So glad this is. You were talking before about how it's easy mode now, and it's, uh, compared to how it used to be, there was no way you could have gotten your game on consoles back in 2003. I'm so glad that things don't suck anymore. Um, a question from Ifra Dijani. can never say his name right. Thanks for watching the show again. Do you like the soundtrack to Cowboy Bebop, John Mack, or other anime soundtracks? I, I don't I watch like... a lot of anime. Sorry. <laughs> how do you like any music? What? <laughs> What's the music you like? What kind of music do you like, John? Here's Any music's fine. Here's, here's the weird thing. I, uh, I haven't listened to music in four years. So I go through these phases where I don't, I just stop listening to music. He's big what into CNC Music Factory, uh, Color Me Bad. Uh, See, this is probably really funny, but I don't know what you're talking about. When did you start working on Sound Shapes again? When, when did that I was really like, kick in? And, uh, <laughs> No, but like, yeah, it was weird. I, I don't know. I just, I guess, like, my, I, I guess I'm like a computer in a way. It's either on or off. So either, so like, when I was in university, I stopped writing video games and I only did music. And then I came out of university and I started doing video games. I started listening to music again. Mm. Um, but I don't know. Whatever. I, you know, I, I, someone told me that they found uh, some like demo tracks of New Order that I'm really interested in listening to. Oh. But, uh, cool. that's, I started, you know, like, sort of that's where my musical roots are is like, I don't know, like some sort of weird mix of New Order, like oldies, like Beatles and the Kinks, and then, you know, some electronic stuff. Some I stuff. love all that stuff. Is there any chance you could get New Order to do? I'd love to hear a bizarre love triangle sound shapes level with, like, Romantic problems graphics. He's slapping each other in the face. Is that, is that, <laughs> that happens in the video. Yeah, that would be awesome. The the, the <laughs> possibilities are really really endless. Yeah, I we have a whiteboard. We have a whiteboard right here. Should we just start brainstorming? Yeah. Again, <laughs> if someone has their email, just shoot the mail. You know, no like, one no one responds to our emails. Yeah, so. So. I will email Peter Hook as soon as we're done with the show and get him to play bass on next sound shapes. Um. But the question, we only have 15 minutes left, so we're almost done. Thank you so much for being on the show, guys. I've had a great time with it. Um, the, the overarching question I've been wondering if we should even address, because maybe it's too obvious, but we've got some time. We might as well do it. 
where do you see the connection between game design and writing music? That's what Sound Shapes is all about to me is finding the parallels there. Um, but straight from your mouths, where, where do you see the parallels between the process of creating a song and creating a game? Uh, we could say I could say a lot of I mean there's I mean <laughs> <laughs> that's how many minutes do you have? Uh, we have fifteen minutes. Take them all if you want. Oh, here, let me say I'll say this. I'll say this. I mean, and I don't. Of course, this comes from someone who has no basically no experience making games. This is the first game that I've ever made, so and I don't know how actual or like how real games are made. But I can tell you. No, but we we made we made a real game. We have, you I can't guess, guess it is, yeah. I guess it's a game now. But I guess uh, coming from a musical background and, and sort of dive, going into this project, I think that something that I, I found was a parallel um, with between the sort of music process and the game process is that is sort of is kind of what I was talking about earlier, just this idea of, um, of I guess, like, for lack of a better word, jamming, mm. which basically means sound jam. Which, <laughs> which basically, I mean, it just comes down to the fact that you don't know when you when you're doing something, you don't know whether it's good or bad. Mm. You know, so like when you're in a musical situation where you're improvising or you're 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 sort of you know playing with whatever with a group of people, and you're you have you're about to do something in this in the in the moment that you're about to put your hands on the instrument or, or play the thing, you don't necessarily know if, if it's going to be good, good or bad. Mm-hmm. And sort of once you've done it, then you, then you evaluate and then you sort of, you're like, oh, that was a good idea or shit, that really sucked. I should maybe Just play different, I should, <laughs> should play a different, <laughs> something else now or something, you know, and then, but if it's a good idea, maybe that good idea leads to another good idea. And maybe another musician that you're with hears that, picks up on that and, extends it to another idea, you know, and I think that the way we, the way Soundshape sort of came about was very similar to that. It's like we didn't have a plan. We didn't know what we were doing. We didn't have any, like, design documents or anything like that. We were just, like, literally two dudes in a basement for, like, two years trying idea after idea after idea, and a lot of them just sucked, but there were enough good ones that sort of chained together and built up until the point where we sort of had something which was, you know, like, I guess, like, the, the Sound Shapes song or the, you know, the design of Sound Shapes or whatever. And I think that, you know, to me, like, that was a big, you know, that, that to me is, like, a parallel for how, you know, how music works a lot of the time. You're just, it's not the most efficient process. It's not a super formal process, but you just, like, put yourself in a room with people that you trust, with people that you share an aesthetic connection with and then you just everyone just does their thing and hopefully at the end of it you have something that sounds that sounds good um, and I think that's kind of like what happened with sound shapes we didn't really know at the beginning what was going to happen and um, just through the through the sheer uh, repetition <laughs> something yeah, well we made a lot of shit oh. yes we had to click on yes we made a lot of we made a lot of shit in those nine like not nine years. Two years. Like we made like we basically made enough where if we wanted to, we could have put up another everyday shoot. Hmm. And it were good ideas. Like they were fucking solid. But you know, it just wasn't what we were after at the time. Mm-hmm. So yeah, like I, I think that process is is the right process. I mean, once you know what the idea is, then yeah, maybe you should storyboard out. Like if you're going into production, you're gonna spend however million. Like if you're a AAA studio and you're spending whatever hundreds of millions of dollars on a game. Maybe you should know what that game is before you start <laughs> working on it, right? But before that, there's like, yeah, like a jam process where you're just like, what of this? What of this? And you start, I don't know. It's not, it's not so rigid, right? Like a lot of interesting things can come out of that. Mm-hmm. Um, but I do think, like, you know, I, I don't know. I, I get the impression that in, 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 like, if you go learn video games, the process is. You make a design document, so you learn that, and then you learn like there's a there's an art pipeline. There's like pipelines. You got you work in this pipeline. It's like a factory. It shouldn't be like that at all. It's mm. you get to the point where, as a programmer, you, you you get proficient enough that you can just try stuff right there, right then and there. And I think that's like that craft is something that um, we don't people don't give enough. I don't know. Like 
thought to, or I guess. I don't, mm -hmm. I don't know what the word is, but like, that's the thing. Like, you got to get good at your craft. And getting good at your craft isn't like doing that pipeline stuff. That's important, but in the idea generation stage, like when you're just trying to figure out what you're doing, figuring out what you're going to spend your $100 million on or whatever, is this proficiency, this craftsmanship where you're like, yeah, I can just try all these different things. Like, obviously, someone who can try 100 different things versus someone who can try one thing, mm. I mean, like, you're missing out on a lot of stuff. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I think that's important. And, and with music, so that's like high level stuff. I guess like here's one low level tidbit that I've been thinking about or I've always thought about is that it's I don't know I, I like using music as a guideline to sort of um, set the pacing of, of, of a video game. It's like like a lot of video games I play. It's sort of like nobody's thinking about that. Nobody's thinking about how this is how this is paced. Like why why still. 20 minutes in, am I still doing this one motion and shooting these guys in the face or whatever? But like, I find like a really good song already has that built in, already has, you know, like a, the rise and fall, um, the anticipation and climax and like release. Um, you need all that stuff in a video game and it's, that's not something that exists, really. So, I guess that's it. Yeah, that's awesome. <laughs> it's, it's absolutely true. Um, <laughs> I think a lot of games, they're not rewarding if they're one-note tunes. They can suck you into playing them, just like uh, a literal one-note tune, like the yeah, one-note like, samba. Like you know one, they have this one hook, and they have that on repeat. But right. still, like, you can take that one hook and like do something with that, you know? Yeah, it'll be catchy, but it's kind of empty. And a lot of games are catchy, but, but empty as well. Um, whereas if you decide to pace a little bit, you run the risk of turning people off because you're actually having them feel more than one thing. Um, but but the, sometimes the you have to like take it away. You know what I mean? Like the shooting is fun, not because you're doing it all the time, but when it comes up, it's really fun. It's like when you watch Heat, right? It's like you know, there's just there's just gonna be this fucking crazy ass shootout that's gonna come any time now, and they're just setting it up and they're setting up. They're like, you know, like they've just got it on simmer, and then they fucking crank it on, and you're like, oh. <laughs> and yet he, sort of like it's the same thing, right? It's like you don't I don't know, games don't have that. You don't have that thing where it's like, I'm gonna take this away from you for a second. Chill the fuck out, because you Okay, sorry, I, I like food analogies. It's like eating sushi, right? It's like mm. it's the ginger or like I don't know if you're if you favor Indian food more, it's like the yogurt and the curry. Mm. Mm. You, need, you eat the curry and then you need a little yogurt to like cleanse the palate, you know, like try something different. And then you do the curry again, and it tastes really good because it's like this. This is the second coming. If you're into perfume, I don't know, whatever. It's like coffee. I'm and totally perfume. into perfume. Tell me more. It's like uh, <laughs> I think this is. I think I ended it. Yeah. I think. I think. I ended it. <laughs> but the sad thing is, he <laughs> did not do as well as Transformers Three: Fall of the Dark Moon or whatever it was called. But McDonald's. even that movie had like there were there were robots mm -hmm. punching the shit out of each other, but then there were moments where there were no robots. You True. need that, or else it's like too much robot, too much punching, and and you sort of lose like you lose sense of what's awesome about it. it just becomes noise. You know what I mean? Yeah, absolutely. Too much noise for me in the Transformers movies, <laughs> but uh, I might be biased because I'm old and I actually like old Transformers, so I was turned off by that. Or McDonald's. People just want to shove salt in their face and then drink a sugary Coke. But sadly, people uh, don't appreciate the uh, juxtapositions as much as I hope that they will someday. Hopefully, people will start to get it. And I'm hoping that Sony is pushing people towards that because so many other games coming out these days offer that. Papa Yo just came out and playing that. What fine juxtapositions they have in there between just absorbing the atmosphere and then all of a sudden magic happens and blows your mind and then it seems like a realistic atmosphere again and then magic happens and yeah, and your game does it and a lot of Sony exclusives do it. Almost I'm becoming a Sony fanboy. <laughs> it's kind of weird. Yeah, you gotta stay objective, man. You're, you, people count on you to stay objective. <laughs> they do. People count on video game blogs. <laughs> for objectivity and being sarcastic. Um, Parappa the Rapper? I just have to just say those words to you and see what happens. <laughs> I'm Jammer Lammy. Oh, yeah. I'm Jammer Lammy? I'm Jammer Lammy, yeah, that's... 
that's the bigger one. I guess we're both guitar guys, I guess. But yeah, I love that game so so yeah. bad. That's the game I often. It's going to be a broken record to people who have watched the show before. But the fact that they have you follow the sheet music, Dyad, freaking awesome game. We had him on the show about uh, a month ago. He got All totally right. drunk off scotch and started talking about like Pedro Costas's design of fun theory and like an encyclopedia. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm a yeah, he's a great guy. But the, the way I'm Jammer Lammy lets you improvise, uh, but or you can follow the um, set sheet music, but it, it rewards you for, for trying new things and expressing yourself. That's something I thought your yeah, game did cool. too. Any chance that the fried egg slash record album hole could get into PlayStation All-Stars? Um... <laughs> Again, if you Anything got email, possible? send it. Send it. Yeah, just we, we, we saw those. We saw those tweets. Yet, uh, was it yesterday or the day? Never. Yeah, yeah there's. Yeah. Um, I, I think he would. Yeah. I mean, yeah. No, no. What, what would he do egg? though? He would. He would fry eggs. I don't know. Well, they he had a lot of the video. <laughs> anyways. I'll explain what you're talking about for the people who don't know. Someone was tweeting about it and wanted that to actually happen. That yeah, thing I just said. a couple of people tweeting and like with uh, someone tweeted like the person at whatever the Superbot or whatever the actual company. Yeah, 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 but there was like, are we allowed mentioning other publications? So IGN <laughs> oh, yeah, did sure. like a video, uh, um, and they they were just going through. I guess they've been doing. I don't know, I don't know much about it. Um, I guess every week they've been fantasizing of a new thing that could be in PlayStation All Stars, and then this week they did. Sound shapes and did a whole video of it. It was like a pitch pitch video, basically. Really? It was, it was a fucking great. It, I didn't think it would be awesome. I mean, in the end, I think they concluded that it, it's like a stupid jokes. idea. Yeah, but <laughs> I I think just watch up until that point and just turn it off. Just turn it off. It doesn't have any attacks. Is the problem? You can't actually. Maybe you just... I don't know. They they come up with stuff. They came up with stuff for for Smash Brothers. I mean, Captain Falcon. No, but they're saying like. Car. The guy could turn the platforms red as one of the... I don't know how that game works. Just like combos or, or some sort of meter you can build up? Mm -hmm. Yeah, up. you build up a meter and you can only knock guys out with your super that you use once you build meter. So it's just all about building meter and then once you build meter, it's all about landing a super. Everything else is kind of varnish. And, and, then, and then the guy could like summon like the laser dude from Craig into the, <laughs> into the game or like the laser dude from Pixel Jam. <laughs> Yeah, that would be awesome. I, I, I'd be all for it. The electroplankton stage is some of my favorite stages in Smash Brothers Brawl. It's one of my favorite stages from Smash Brothers Brawl. So. Really? Yeah. Oh, yeah, I love that stage. It, it randomizes the situation so much. Um, I don't play Smash Brothers for is it the competitive. Music? Like, are you beating people up? And then oh, you guys haven't played it? you got to send me your addresses. I'm sending you Smash Brothers Brawl as a gift. There's and also, one. have you played the Bit Trip series? I'll send that to you, too. Yeah, 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 we know that. Those are pretty good games. Um, yeah, there's Electroplankton stage in Smash Brothers oh Brawl, God. which is based on Hannonbow, I think it is, which is the one that looks kind of like a tree in water. Is that the okay. right? Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. And you hit the leaves on the tree or the branches on the tree, and it makes the Electroplankton sounds. You can also change the environment that you're fighting on based on that and just make music while you're beating up guys. Very neat. That's great. Yeah. yeah Here's another stage. idea. When the sound sheets ball comes, then everyone has to jump to a beat or something. So ah. Now you have to be rid of it. You know, that's a bad idea. Sorry. No, it's a very interesting idea. But see, it's like a jam, right? Like, you know, if you roll down a design document, you might be like, you have to do that. And now we're jamming. And you, you can right. say, well, that's a stupid idea. Don't do that. It's a it's a John Cleese thing. I don't. Do you like Monty Python at all? Yeah. You do. I I live in a hole. <laughs> I'll send you a thing. John Cleese talked about um, open how to be creative. Closed. Yeah, the open versus closed mindset thing, right? Oh, you already know about it, Rex. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, yeah he it's knows all about like I don't really know about like. <laughs> I'll send it to him. I'll make him watch it. Yeah, I guess I got a lot of. <laughs> Oh. Gotta watch. Back well, we you. have one minute left, dudes. Let's promote your thing. Sound Shapes is out now on PlayStation Network and PlayStation Vita. Fourteen ninety nine, I think. There's how many albums? Five albums. Yeah, and you get both. You get the PlayStation and the Vita. You buy once, you get both of them. Yeah, it, right. It's also a PlayStation Three game. A lot yeah. of people don't seem to realize. And that it's that. good on PlayStation yeah. Three. <laughs> I only have it on PlayStation. Yeah, 3. I know it's like that touch stuff is really sexy, but. Yeah. On PlayStation 3, it works really well, too. 
Yeah, yeah uh, I've enjoyed it a lot on PlayStation 3. It's a game. Beck's on it. Jim Guthrie's on it. Super Brothers is on it. Dead Mouse is on it. You guys are on it. It's, uh, yeah, it's a huge collaboration. It's probably not like anything you've played before. It wasn't like anything I've played before, and I, I love the game a lot. So buy it. You can also follow these guys on Twitter. What are your tweeters? Do you remember them? He's uh, at Queasy00, and I'm at Robot and Proud. Yeah. The game is at Sound oh, yeah, Shapes. the game is at Sound Shapes. So Sound Shapes related news will be found there on Sound Shapes. Uh, as for me, you can watch the show on uh, Twitch TV slash Destructoid. Find the podcast on iTunes. It's called Sup Holmes. Just check it out if you want. And I'm at, at tronnots.com is my Twitter. <sighs> Twitter. That's all I <laughs> guess. Shouldn't be so cynical. Goodbye. Bye. We did it. Oops. We did it. Well, first Holmes was born. Then he got fat, bald, and tired, tired, tired. Stop, Holmes.